Well, come December, flying a drone could be made legal. The Civil Aviation Ministry has finalized the national drone policy, which will come into effect from the 1st of December. This policy comes after two years of deliberation, finally ending the ambiguity and the confusion. The new drone policy allows recreational, personal or commercial use of drones, but with several riders. Drones can only be flown during daylight and within visual line of sight. Apart from this, a unique ID will be required for drones which weigh more than 2 kilograms. Drones cannot be flown near airports, international borders, coastline, the eco-sensitive zones, military installations, among other places. Joining us now to discuss the implications of India's drone policy and the way forward and the opportunities. Joining us are Utkarsh Singh, co-founder and CEO of Drona Maps, John Livingston, founder of Jonet Technologies, and Vignesh Santanam, the president of the Drone Federation of India. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here. John, let me start by asking you. You've got these drones right here uh, in our studios. Uh, you know, is this policy in alignment with global rules and regulations? Almost yes, it is in alignment with the global regulations. Uh, our regulations are a little uh, uh, inclined towards the security aspect, okay. unlike the other countries. When you say inclined towards the security aspect, what do you mean? We have to be more careful and uh, we have more security issues in the country. So there's more sensitivity? Sensitivity is okay. the word okay. probably I should use. So we, ha we uh, have to Legitimate be really... Legitimate or do you believe that, uh, <laughs> that this is the government way of sort of uh, ensuring that the rollout itself is not mired by too much controversy. See, the biggest reason why we had such a delay of the uh, release of regulations is probably because we uh, saw the Venezuela president's uh, uh, drone attack uh, a few weeks back. Mm. And uh, that was the reason. That's a security threat. Mm. It's, it's a major security threat. Mm. In, the, in this policy, we don't have uh, the detachment ability okay. uh, of a drone. Drones cannot detach anything, which means you can't drop anything. Right. The, you know, and which means also we can't have pizza deliveries as well. Yet. But yet, yet. Okay. I should say the word yet. But nevertheless, uh, uh, security was the primary reason. Uh, we had a lot of concerns okay. which actually initiated uh, the MHA, MOD to go deep into this technology. Though right. they are very small, it was right. uh, very important for them to consider a lot of things. Though okay. DGC has done a fantastic job okay. of uh, finally giving us the opportunity to fly the drones across and for everybody in the oh, country. From the 1st of December. Yes. Uh, Utkash, uh, you know, you at uh, Drona Maps have been using uh, drones uh, for 3D mapping essentially of uh, our cities. Uh, take me through the opportunities, take me through some numbers of the kind of uh, opportunity that we're sitting on. Um, all right, so I'll, I'd like to start with uh, going back to the previous point that John made. Uh, when you're looking at the regulations in the international aspect, the key thing to observe over there is we are almost two years late yeah. uh, in comparison to all the other countries. So where has that put us? We are unable to support companies uh, such as ourselves or any other commercial companies mm. which are looking for long-range operations. Okay. And uh, whether that is news crews or for mapping. And uh, that puts into sight uh, the very important factor. Uh, which is you're unable to put in any permissions okay. on demand, on okay. request, when you're trying to make a mission. Okay. For example, if I were to map the city of Gurgaon, hmm. then I cannot uh, just suddenly put up 100 drones in the air, even if they might be autonomously controlled, okay. and uh, map out the entire city in a safe and reliable way. Okay. The reason for that is beyond line of sight, operations are restricted, you cannot fly over crowds, you cannot fly in So range, the policy cannot... is restrictive currently? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, so where does that then leave this opportunity that we're talking about? So this is definitely a very great move on the part of DGC. A good first step. Absolutely. And although we are a little bit late, but the key aspect to realize here is that we are a little bit further ahead than what the version one of other countries were. Okay. So in that aspect, we're doing well. By December 1st, if the digital sky, the open sky applications are uh, catching up to the level of international mm. standards and mm. the permissions can come in on demand, mm. that would really uh, like let the breather in for the drone space. Okay, let me go across to Vignesh. Vignesh, we've talked about the security sensitivities, to some extent legitimate, as John was pointing out, as well as the fact that we might be two years behind other countries, but uh, we've finally moved on putting a policy in place. Uh, what kind of flexibility would you like to see as we move to Words, the drone policy 2.0 we talked about delivery that's not on the table as of now uh, and let's talk about bandwidth and capabilities even within the regulator the DGCA because that is going to be important as you put this ecosystem together isn't it see that's true I mean uh, one thing that we have to note is that this policy is extremely extremely comprehensive so the DGCA has, and those who have formulated this policy have actually done a lot of groundwork to make uh, all quarters of the industry happy. 
Having said that, one must keep in mind that when, when drone policies were implemented across the globe, even in, even in the United States and in France and other places in the EU, a lot of recreational yes. pilots uh, had a bit of trouble. So their operations were generally hampered. So if you, if you actually take a look at the policy, if you deep dive a little bit, that, uh, that may not be in order here because if you, if you look at uh, uh, how, this, how the framework is actually uh, created, uh, you can actually fly nano drones up to yeah. up to uh, around 50 feet with uh, with minimum uh, you know legal ramifications. So I would say for those, for creatives, for people, for young startups right. who are still in the concept stage, they can uh, putting pieces together. Uh, yeah. I don't see much of a hindrance. Uh, on the whole, it's a fantastic move because now we have we have a okay. clear cut roadmap, and these guidelines are are overall good for the industry. Uh, I'd like to make a second point that uh, you did mention uh, uh, drone policy 2.0. That's the important part. Uh, yes, uh, the gentleman on the panel did mention that things like, you know, there is an embargo on things like BVLOS and, uh, you know, drone deliveries. But the good thing is that these things are mentioned in policy. And given that this is drone policy 1.0, it, yeah. it is fairly suggestive that drone policy 2.0 will sort of encompass all these things that, uh, that have been mentioned in the policy right now. What is the broad timeline that you expect that we could possibly start to move towards that? So, um, if you if you ask me, I think we should see something we should see something positive by end of year. So the good thing is that the drone community is very close knit. A lot of people are coming together, exchanging best practices, exchanging ideas on what is mm. best for the industry. And you know, as and when we we take notes and we have something concrete, message goes out to uh, to authorities like the DGCA who formulate policy. So in terms of mm. the industry support that is that is out there, that is right out there. And you know, I'll be happy to see if we see a 2.0, right. uh, you know, in the next year. I mean, and historically the DGCA has been coming out with circulars every year. And I think if that pattern continues, it's it's good for one and all. Sure. Okay, uh, John, uh, let's talk about this close-knit community. We've got two drones sitting here in our studios. Now let's talk about both the supply as well as the demand picture. Let's start with the supply first. Well, suppliers, uh, uh, we have <coughs> been importing uh, so far a lot of drones uh, from outside India. Though we had a lot of restrictions on import of drones, until last uh, April, uh, we uh, were import importing without any issues. Okay. Now, importing drones have become a major issue with the mm. customs, DGCA, because they are, they are as good as bad. They are very good uh, for a lot of people. They, are, they might be bad also. In the wrong hands. In the yeah. wrong yeah. hands. That was the reason why we had these import issues. But now, uh, coming to the supplier uh, perspective, we Indian, uh, so we, we have about uh, 15 to 20 suppliers okay. right in India. who Manufacturing make, in, in India. In India, exactly. Okay. Well, uh, when I use, use the word manufacturing, we can say the import uh, components uh, partly and, okay. and the make and, assemble, and assemble, assemble in, in India. Uh, okay. in, integrate here. Okay. Uh, apart from that, uh, the Quality is what we always had the issue. Mm. So we used to in import until now, mm. but the quality is really matching mm. uh, today, okay. and the suppliers from India okay. are actually increasing. Okay. So that's a good news for us, and uh, the policy is also in favor of of Indian suppliers. Okay. So make in India is part of the the drone policy here as well. I Utkarsh, have to politely yes. disagree with John just okay, a little please, bit. Please go right ahead. Please go right ahead. Yes. And the the reason for that is um, I I don't support the idea that we are, our quality is quite at at the world power yet. Okay. The reason for that is technologies which were discovered or uh, like in some way applicable about two to three years ago in the foreign market mm. such as uh, VTOL fixed wing aircrafts yeah. are still just taking up in India. Like they're okay. just being manufactured, starting to being manufactured sure. in India. Sure. The biggest problems are the controllers, the biggest problems are the chipsets that control. Even mm. with the DGCA policy they have a no permission, no takeoff rule, mm. the NPNT. And when you take that into sight you want to kind of build an infrastructure where you have okay. an import uh, no import control, if I may. Okay. okay. And uh, only then will you be able to progress the technology to the level which is acceptable to all the stakeholders, keeping in mind the security. Um, okay, so there are supply-side constraints that we are faced with at this point in time. Absolutely. But, but uh, Vignesh, let me ask you then about the demand-side picture. Uh, you know, where are you actually seeing demand coming in from at this point in time? And what's the prognosis on the road ahead? See, I'll... I, I'll politely disagree with what uh, Mr. Utkash had to say on this because uh, see if you, if you look at... <laughs> I, like, I like the way everyone is politely disagreeing with each other. This is, this is the perfect panel where everyone is politely disagreeing with each other. No, I, I mean I do agree it's not all rainbows and sunshine as far as the industry in India is concerned but uh, but but I must say that you know you know a common concern that everyone in the industry raises especially people who are importing drones say that you know my drone is stuck at customs what do I do now? So now the good thing is there is yeah. there are guidelines in yeah. place. Yeah. So now that so you know the teething troubles that 
uh, that the industry people from the industry or every drone owner faced over the last two to three years was you know, uh, you know in a cl in a client vendor situation yeah. every question that every time every time you you face a client the question you're asked is is it legal can you import them is it going to fall on someone's head now you know these are things that are actually yeah. covered yeah. these are these are yeah. uh, it may not be the the be all and end all of it it may not be a one size fits all solution but but it's at least there in the mm. policy so that and um, mm. to answer your question about um, yeah about demand so one thing i can speak say is almost every drone company in in india especially manufacturers service providers alike they're all fairly young companies for that. Uh, given that now now there is uh, there is yeah. a, a policy in place we can see a rise in the investor confidence so maybe and maybe several months ago as as okay. recent as several months ago investors would pro probably stay away from drone startups because uh, because the the whole policy side of it was mm. in a gray area and now that you know we have this in place we can see a rise in confidence sure. uh, also you know to get back at, uh, to answer what utkar said i would say that uh, in terms of the quality and uh, you know india the cream of the crop lives here i think we have some really fantastic engineers the drone federation of india works with a lot mm. of uh, startups that are doing doing a great job in agriculture and and uh, you know putting pieces together to build some fantastic drones yeah. i think they just yeah. need as long as yeah. um, you know mm. policy is not at the cost of talent i think we're mm. we're in we're in the right place so i would see uh, i only i think the only way is now forward and uh, i think we're, we're we're making the right noises as far as that is concerned <laughs> the, yeah. I think there is no, agreement think, on yeah. that. Yes, absolutely. Polite agreement. <laughs> polite uh, agreement. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's on polite that. in the drone uh, industry. So John, so. John, give me numbers now. Uh, see, uh, the, uh, uh, absolutely, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Maybe the, that's why it's taken you guys this long to get the policy in place. <laughs> We've been very <laughs> polite all the time. <laughs> well, coming to the numbers uh, part of it, uh, demand is on the rise. Trust me, we have uh, been called again and again. I want this drone. I want that that mm. drone. Uh, th those are all unaccounted calls. But coming to the accounted uh, numbers, uh, India has already allotted uh, about three billion dollars the defence budget okay. for proc procurement of uh, Drone. defence drones okay. uh, by 2025. Okay. And now we have the civilian market. Yeah. In the last two and a half years, we personally have seen tenders coming out by the government agencies okay. worth about 500 crores okay. Indian rupees. Okay. So, and it is just on the rise. Right. And in the commercial market, 50% uh, uh, of the commercial market goes to the Filmmaking industry, okay, and the, the rental as well as rental buying. as okay. well as buying. Okay. It's a very high demand, mm. and they really, really are asking again and again. Plus, drone survey, mm. Indian railways, mm. they want to do their inspection. So mm. there is so much demand smart in agriculture, and, smart yeah, cities, so Indian that's rail traffic yeah. management. Yeah. Specific had the policy regulation in 2016 outlined in the railway budget. Okay, in 2016, uh, special uh, like corpus for the drones itself, yeah. or drone based surveys. In that, uh, India has had uh, almost 300 crores of tenders mm. being released cumulatively for the surveying and aerial survey programs, either with uh, railways okay. or with smart cities. We are working across multiple smart cities. But I'd like to take you back again to the point that all these commercial operations uh, need to be kept into sight with the way that regulatory policy is forming. Yeah. Yeah. If the regulatory policy doesn't have an application with it, sure. to keep it a real time, to keep it a like decision making, yeah. uh, in such a way that multiple drone manufacturers, multiple drones in the same airspace can be accommodated, right. then you're not looking at a very futuristic society as of yet. Sure. So I'd like to make a point that we are not in the 21st century, we are going towards the 22nd century and we need to start looking we at that. We need to start looking at that. <laughs> well, uh, gentlemen, we wish you the very best of luck and uh, there is consensus, polite consensus, Absolutely, that there is, yes. there is yeah. one, way, one way forward for this uh, business. Uh, as long as regulations don't play spoil sport and that is up. Appreciate you joining us here you, on sir. CNBC TV 18. Time for us to head into a break, but next up, an exclusive with the Niti Aayog CEO, Amitabh Khan. Stay tuned.